I am now a doctor. I come from Holland. I live in the north of Holland, and I'm a farrier. You know, the, the very essence of the mental game is this. The only reason that the event matters is because we make it matter. Welcome to the Mullins Farrier Podcast. Every horse, whatever it was doing, had a season. Once their competition season finished, they took the shoes off, they chucked it out in the field with some other horses, and it had a two, maybe three months period where it went and remembered what being a horse was all about. Even in a cheaper area, your prices should be set by your skill level, by your experience. And some people might not feel that they're worth, you know, as much as others. But if you're only charging $160 to shoe a horse, then the only way you're making money is on your trims. The WCB was a way to, to make sure that you kept the trade alive. I think I'm a custodian of the trade. So it's like we have to keep it going. It was hard, but, you know, you adapt and overcome. And that probably gets to me where I am now. It's problem solving, horseshoeing's problem solving, and back in the day it was problem solving how to be as strong as the older apprentices. So it's all about adapting and overcoming, which was good. I know we learn every day, but you do have to put yourself outside the box and I'm just continue to learn, which is why I was just trying to do my fellowship because I still have apprentices. And if I stay at my AW, I'm stagnant. Welcome everyone. Before I start, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to those of you who have supported the podcast through buying us a coffee, purchasing swag online or in person, and of course through the generous sponsorship from folks like our friends at OutWest Designs. Some folks have been super generous in their monthly donations buying us a coffee, and I would be dropping the ball if I didn't say a special thank you to Shira of Stonehenge Forge Horseshoeing and Derek, who unfortunately I don't have his last name. I am humbled by your generous support. And while they went above and beyond, I appreciate everyone who has pitched in to help keep this endeavor going. I first met Dower and his wife Naomi on my first trip to Stonely, way back when I was still calling it Stone Lee. He was one of the judges that year and understandably quite busy. So while we made plans to do the interview then, it didn't work out. Last year, however, Dower was back, but this time as part of the Dutch team. And he had a little bit more time, so he made it happen. You'll hear us briefly allude to it in the conversation, but there is a great story that exemplifies how tough and determined Dower is as a competitor. Through Danny Bennett's military-like leadership as the chief steward, he might have even been in the military now that I think of it, the volunteers worked diligently to get the competition arena set up early the afternoon before so the teams could practice. Team Holland was one of the first to arrive and take advantage of this. Dower was building a shoe with a striker and something went wrong with the rhythm, causing his hammer to recoil off the sledgehammer and hit him right in the face below the eye. I just happened to be watching as it occurred. Everyone stopped and held their breath. Dower Stryker looked horrified. Dower touched his face and asked, Is there blood? His partner shook his head and said no. And Dower said, Okay, good, let's go. And carried on. Needless to say, if I ever end up in a bar fight, I hope this man is on my side. During our conversation, we touch on several topics, including how he and his wife Naomi run two separate shoeing businesses where they specialize in different areas and use different shoeing techniques. We talk about their bad run of luck after the previous year's Stonely with a house fire, and we talk about his unique side hustle that brought him to North America long before he started competing on this side of the pond. Anyway, It's always a pleasure to run into this man, and I'm glad we were able to do this. I hope you enjoy the conversation as much as I did. You were the judge here last year, and that's when I first met you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and you've been a competitor for quite a while, have you not? I started with school, I was 17, but I started as competitor, I think I was 32. Okay, and before you were a competitor, what did you do? I shoe in horses, and I had another hobby. I uh, import motorcycles from America. 
Yeah, so you used to travel up up and down the coast? Yeah, I uh, we buy the mo- most motorcycles in North or South Carolina. Okay. And we go twice in a year to America and we buy 30, 35 uh, motors and we send it to Holland and we sell it. Really? Yeah. You said as time progressed, then it started to slow down, like, it got expensive, I guess, to buy uh, the bikes. The gilding and the dollar uh, for the dollar was expensive for a gilding, and it just, the the level goes down, 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 and the motorcycles are more expensive. Right. And we stopped. Oh, okay. I do that. I think for ten, twelve years. I remember talking to you last year, and you said you still had a couple of the bikes, right? One or two. Yeah, I have two bikes. I have an Indian. 1941 Big Chief, and I have an Indian 1948 Big Chief. Wow. And an old Cadillac. Oh, yeah? yeah. Really? Yeah. Did you pick that up when you... No, I bought a Cadillac in Holland. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he's from 1970, I think, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like that. I, and my working car is also a, a USA car. Is it? What is it? An AT4 GMC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, so you really like the North American vehicles. I like the American people. And before, I had also a uh, 2500 Silver Radio, and I drive in that car, I think, for 14 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Once the motorcycle thing sort of tapered out for you, that's when you started competing? Yeah, when I stopped, uh, I uh, meet Grant Moon, and... He come over to my place and he trains us a little bit and uh, I, he come one or two times in a year and oh, uh, really? we practice a lot. We showing horses and that's and that's starting my competing. Okay. I think that the 18th or the, maybe the 19th time I'm here in Stonely. Wow. Yeah. So in Holland is forging just not? No, it is not a big group. Uh, we have a small group. Uh, I think. Uh, Five or six persons come uh, over to my place for training them um, every week. And we do that in the summertime, sometimes one or two times in three months. Okay. And there is now a new group coming, younger people. But I think the group from the younger people is also not big. I think five or six. Oh, okay. I think the max in Holland is, I think, 18, maybe 20 people. Who do? And that is a little bit the same in Germany. She have also not a big group. Okay. And we try to make the group together and do more in Holland for training and competing. And we try that to do. Right. Okay. Yeah. When my house is finished, uh, I have more room and then, uh, we try that to do. Yeah. So you, after last year, after I saw you last year, you kind of had a a bad turn of events when you got home. Yeah, my house is burned uh, one week uh, before Christmas. Wow. And she rebuilt it on the moment, and I hope it is in the January or February finished. That you'll be done. You were able to still live there yeah, while they built the yeah, new yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We buy an, uh, an uh, chalet. What is the name? A chalet. Yeah, Car- uh, big caravan. Oh, caravan. Chalet. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. I, he's four by 11, and we live there. In. Okay. And he is uh, on, on my, uh, but I live, uh, he stayed there on the. On the property. On the property, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met your missus last year and yeah, this yeah. year, Naomi. And she shoes as well. Yeah, she's also fire. Okay. Now, do you work together? No, we work not together. I think uh, she shoe a lot of uh, uh, problem horses, what coming from the fat. Yep. With special shoes and everything. Right. And uh, no, we should not together. She had a customer and I had my own customer. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the best way. <laughs> yeah. The secret to it. Yeah, we should. Yeah. <laughs> She's out in the evening. I think that's better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Now, what type of horses do you mainly work on? I shoe all the type of horses, the sash horses, the jump horses, but I live in the north of Holland and I live in the middle of the Frisian area, the black horses, uh, we show every day uh, two or three or four uh, of that black horses. Okay. And the black horses go everywhere on the world, also to America, and right. South Africa, and everywhere. You see, everywhere. Yeah. 
And so do you usually have people help you or do you do them yourself? I have uh, my whole life uh, apprentices and my last apprentice, he started, I think, uh, four years ago and he go to school. I have a very good apprentice and he's now working for me uh, two days in a week, Mon- Monday to Tuesday. He's your only help right now. He's my only help, yeah. I'm next year 60 and I think this is my last apprentice. Very good guy. And Go is, out when it's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, that is it okay, yeah. I think. And what is the process like to become a farrier in Holland? Do you have to go to school to become a farrier or do you do an apprenticeship? Both. You have both. But the school is one day or two days in a week okay. for three years. And that's not a very big school. Right. When you go in England to school, it's much, much, much more. And then do you have to write a test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do a test, not only uh, horseshoe, but also bookkeeping and English, oh, really? English language and uh, all the things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. And are there a lot of farriers in Holland? She tell me, I think, 750. Oh, really? Or 650. Okay. And then uh, in uh, Holland, also a lot of farriers, uh, she have no papers from schools. She's showing it hard, and uh, she do it for a lower price. And oh, okay, so they don't really crack down. Well, on I that? think you have that everywhere. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, it, in my part of the world, you don't have to have any certificates, yeah. and you can become a farrier. I guess that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> in Holland, do you have conventions like this, like a big group? Small with the group, and uh, some people are uh, two or three from Germany, Switzerland. Sometimes one or two from Denmark. Okay. We go also, in, maybe that is, I think in March, we go to a contest in Denmark. That is, I think she has 60 competes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is very big, of a big contest, yeah. And is that mostly Danish people? Yeah, mostly. Uh, yeah, Scandinavian people. Do you travel a lot no. to compete? No, yeah. No, when we go to Denmark, it's for uh, six hours driving, I think. Oh, okay. But for you, close, but it's for, for, for <laughs> that's, it's a a long never, way. that's for a long way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Holland is everything small. Right. When we're driving 30 minutes to the first customer, that's it. Right. You know, my father's the customer is maybe 35 minutes. Oh, okay. That's Not so you, bad. That is, yeah, that's very close. Right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And how did you become a farrier? What made you decide? My dad. Oh, so your dad was a farrier? My dad was farmer. And he said to me, you are the farrier and your brother goes to farming. <laughs> really? And I was 17, I think. And I started to the, the farming school. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you had no choice. No, it was my dad's his, uh, uh, idea. One thing I wanted to ask you about, because they're very unique, are your shoes. And you shoe in clogs. Yeah. Yeah. And. Do you ever wear any other type of shoes or always the have, uh, the Dutch clock? When I go out with my wife, I have weekend shoes. Oh, do you? Leather weekend shoes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But when I'm working, I uh, walk everywhere on my clocks. I was in America, but I was also in Siberia, in the middle of Siberia, and I had my clocks also on there. Really? Yeah. And you find them perfectly comfortable? Yeah. And when the people you see, she likes it. She asks me always on the clocks, and she... I remember you the whole time. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, by the clocks. Yeah. 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 And, and I heard a story of one time you were, I think you were competing here at Stonely, and a hammer or something fell on, on one of them and broke, broke one of your shoes. Oh, that Did that possible. happen? I forgot that. But when he's a little bit broke, I can repair him easy with a wire or something. Yeah, that's no problem. Right. With shoeing... It's just that because they're so big, they seem like they'd be cumbersome, but they're not at all. Like that they'd be hard to move around in. But you don't find that? I was 17. I started with clocks. And uh, that's for me, no problem. That's all you, yeah, yeah. That's all you And know. I have big feet. It is for me easier to buy uh, clocks than shoes. Really? Yeah. When I go to the store, to the agriculture store, I can buy my size. Right. I go to the store for shoes, there's a little bit problem. <laughs> right. And are clogs expensive back home? Or? I think these clogs are 32 euros. Oh, so that's no, not... I think when you have working shoes, that is cheaper when you can walk one year or longer. 
on working shoes for 120 euros. Right. And I need every two and a half, three months new ones. Oh, uh, okay. That is more expensive, I think, yeah. When I was talking with you and Naomi, she said, so in your day-to-day, -day, you cold shoe and she hot shoes? Yeah. yeah. And why do you do it differently? Uh, she learned uh, hot shoeing from her teacher, and I was, when I was apprentice, he shoe all the horses called. And I go now to competition, and I shoe, I shoe maybe one or two horses in a week. Hot. Hot, okay. Uh, mostly I do it called. And I think it's a little bit easier also for the horse. Yeah. When you have a little bit of nervous horse. Yeah. You do it hot and you have a little bit of smoke. Or the horse is. And when you do it cold, I, th I think it's a little bit easier. Only you must hammering a little bit harder. Right. Yeah. So even shaping you do cold? Yeah, everything. Uh, I have an anvil from the 50 kilos in my car on a wooden block and uh, I hammering the skulls. It's no problem. Really? Yeah. Wow. When you said that last year, it, it amazed me because you're so good in the forge, but that you don't do it on, on the road. I like it to do it golf. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's what you're trained in, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what you know. Yeah. So uh, for a farrier that's just starting out, yeah. is there anything, any advice you would have for them? I think that there's one thing good for you. Go to big contests. You meet a lot of people and talk to the good people. She can learn you something. That's very important. Mm -hmm. But we must learn as a group together. And when you are a little bit older, it is a little bit. But when you are younger, you learn a lot. Yeah. From horses, tools, hammers, shoeing, and talk to other people. Right. And go around the world to contest. I think it's very important. I learned a lot of that to do that. So I know you went to the U.S. to buy motorcycles. Have you gone back for shoeing, like to contests? When I do the motorcycles, I go not to a horseshoe contest. The last two times in Calgary I was there, I think it was in 2014, 13, 14, I think. And I was two times in Las Vegas on the competition with uh, Greg Tenka. Oh, okay. The yeah, WCB. yeah, before the COVID. Right. Do you think you'll go back? I think I go next year to the World Championship in Calgary, yeah, I hope. that would be good to see you there. It's a little bit time, but I, I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it to do. Well, that'd be fun to see you there. Yeah. Back to Canada. This is the Stratum Tectorium. Short answer questions brought to you by OutWest Design and Fabrication. Your choice for farrier rakes. What's your favorite book? I read never a book. No? No. When I go, go to a contest or uh, something from school, for me, is it important that there's one guy, he tells something yep. and do it well with your hands. Right. Yep. That's for me more than a book. The other week, I remember me that better when I do it with my hands. Do it well with your hands. It's not only talking, it's doing. That's for me, but that's important. Yeah, there's a lot of people, I think, that yeah, that's the best very, way. I think also, yeah. Favorite brand of nails? Endura Concave. Okay. From Mustad. Yep. What shoe sizes or lengths do you usually have to cut for the horses you work on? I think uh, number three from Mustad, two and three. Okay. Favorite rasp? Heller. Yeah. The, the green one? The green tank? Yeah. Yep. A lot of people say that. Your dream farrier truck? I have my dream fairy truck. I tell it you before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By a GMC RT4. Right. Pickup. Do you have a, a cap on the back? No. no I, by my other car, I had a cap on the back, but this is flat. Okay. And I make everything from uh, RFES, roof steel. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Inside. In, inside, yeah. Okay. Yep. Favorite rounding hammer? I make it myself. Do you? What weight is the hammer? One and a half kilo. Oh, really? Yeah. Holy jeez. Favorite type of bar stock to work with, like concave, steel? 
normal food shoes. We have it hollowed, not uh, not a lot concave. No. And, uh, we have ma- mostly factory shoes. Right. Okay. What is your favorite thing to do after work? No, a little bit working in the forge, uh, make tools, the garden. I like it when it's my garden nice. And uh, on Saturday, I drink uh, two, three beers in, in the pub. I like it also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's the next thing on your bucket list? When my house is finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Uh, yeah, that's a big one, yeah. What's your favorite brand of factory-made shoe? My favorite shoe comes from Mustad. Yeah. I think Mustad makes good shoes. What's your ideal number of horses to shoe all around in one day? Now, before I uh, I was ill in, two, in, in 2018, and I shoe every day eight or nine. And behind that, I see for years every hour on my clock, and that's now stopped. And I shoot you know, every day four or five times six, but that's for me enough. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of horses. Eight? Yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Favorite anvil? I have an anvil uh, in the car from Germany. I forgot the name. Benninghaus, I think. Okay. And I have two anvils from England. I forgot the name. Uh, the, the two good anvils. Okay. I think the same as here. Okay. Yeah, like the, the ones that they're competing on. Okay. Do you have a dog? Yeah, two. Do they come with you? No, with uh, Naomi. Oh, okay. We have an, uh, an, a Ritzback and an, uh, Dalmatia, a white one with the pickles. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Dalmatian, yeah. If you're stumped on what to do for a horse in a particular case, who do you call? Yeah, yeah, I can call the fat. I have... Uh, I do a little bit the same as Naomi, I think, but I have, I think, five or six numbers in my phone. Yeah. Uh, when the, the, the customer go to the Fed, I call the Fed. Yes. I talk not to the customer, but it is always a little bit different. Yes. If there is a problem with the horse, I call self the Fed. Yeah. I think that's the good way. Yeah, same here. Yeah, and she sent me the photos on the, on the phone, and I can see, and we can talk, and I think that's the good way. Yep, same here. Not with the customer. No. <laughs> what do you use as your planner or your agenda? I do the shelf. When I shoe on horse, I have horses I do every five weeks. I have uh, I have horses for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. And I do it in a, I read it and uh, then is it okay for the next time? Yeah. Right. Okay. I know what the horse needs. Right. And for the customer, is that okay? Right. Yeah. What's your favorite method of soothing aches and pains? Like if you're sore, is, is there anything you do for that? No, I'm working only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doesn't surprise me. So, no. <laughs> yeah. You say that as as you have a black eye and got hit in the head with a hammer yeah. and yeah, I, yeah, 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 and yeah, just yeah. carried on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tough man. Do you have a favorite drink? I like mostly beer, and sometimes we in this area you have a special liquor. So you call it beer, but she make it in my area, and I like that also. Okay. And when I, I go out, I drink mostly uh, for food beer. Okay, gotcha. Favorite song? Johnny Cash. Yeah. yeah. Do you work out? No, no, no. I, I sure in Osmar. I think it's the same. <laughs> yeah, right. What would you have been if not a farrier? I think farmer. Yeah. It was close to be, I think, farmer, yeah. And then the last question, the COVID question. If you were stuck in a shop with somebody, another farrier for a month, who would you want it to be? I think my apprentice, but he must learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah that's a good answer. I yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm glad we were finally able to do <laughs> thank this. Thank you very much. <laughs>